So Genesis has released their full mod year change list on the 23 mod year. So let's go ahead and take a look at what changed for the 2023 Genesis GV80. So just a little bit of background behind the Genesis GV80. It was first introduced for the 2021 mod year, sort of alongside the G80 sedan as well but it was one of the first models overall to debut the new design language for the brand. And you might recall the GV80 was at the center of attention when a pro golfer crashes, got into a big accident, and injured himself pretty severely, and this brought a lot of attention to the brand as well as the brand new GV80, and I think overall it resulted in a positive image for the brand, uh, given that he walked away with you know serious injuries, but ones that he has been able to recover from over time. So I think that is one of the things that helped launch the brand as well as the GV80. But regardless of this incident, it was the first SUV that Genesis brought to the market. And I think it was a huge success as SUVs are much more popular than their three sedans that they had been selling prior. So for 2023, there's not a ton different, but there are a few changes as well as pricing changes. So let's go ahead and cover those right now. So starting out, they have added an oil life sensor and oil life management system to the GV80. Now I assume this has to do with uh, interval changing in terms of the oil, but it helps monitor the oil itself uh, to determine whether you can prolong that oil change just a little bit further or need it a little bit sooner. Overall, I would think this helps the engine life a little bit. So it's interesting to see that they've added this system. I'm not sure if it's in other Genesis vehicles currently, but this is kind of the first time I've heard of it. So that is definitely interesting to see. But moving on, they have also changed out the multimedia controller for the infotainment system in the center console. Now, if you have seen my Genesis GV80 changes video, you know that they detailed that one a little bit further and said it's an all new convex design. So it'll be interesting to see if this one is the same one that's going in the G80 sedan or if it's a very similar design or anything like that. Uh, but overall, I like using the controllers in the center console for the infotainment systems. I think they do uh, really well, especially in the Hyundai and uh, Genesis vehicles. But overall, it's nice to see that they are improving the control method for the infotainment system. Next, they have changed the SOS button to red, which they've done in many of their other models as well. I assume this makes it easier to find in case of an emergency. And it also uh, follows, I think, the Germans as well, which have red SOS buttons or colored SOS buttons at least. So that's definitely interesting to see. And lastly, they have detailed that they've changed the second row cup holder design. Now they've not provided any specifics about what they changed, maybe make it easier to use. I'm not familiar with the interior of the GV80. Maybe they're a little uh, difficult to use or the design was a little bit poor from the start. But anyways, they've changed the second row couple of designs, so maybe they're bigger, maybe they're easier to use. So in terms of packaging, this is where the big news comes in for the GV80, and that is the fact that they've gotten rid of all the 2.5T rear-wheel drive trim levels. So you can no longer get a four-cylinder rear-wheel drive model which was also the cheapest model that they offered. So this uh, definitely increases the base price quite a bit for the GV80. Uh, we'll cover that here in a second. And in addition to this, they have also gotten rid of the 3.5T Prestige Signature trim, which just so happened to be the most expensive G80 you could buy. So basically they have dropped the least expensive and most expensive trims and kind of brought the two, I guess, ends a little bit closer together. Uh, but still overall, there's a lot of price difference between the cheapest and most expensive GV80s still after this change. So again, we'll cover that here in a second. But moving on, they've also added some equipment to the 2.5T all-wheel drive advanced trim level, which includes a panoramic sunroof and ventilated front seats. But lastly, to cover the color changes, which are very similar to some of the other models that offer these colors, they are removing Adriatic Blue in October of 2022 and replacing it by Capri Blue in November. They are dropping Himalayan Gray in February of 2023 and replacing it by Makalu Gray in March. And they are dropping Melbourne Gray Matte and replacing it by Makalu Gray Matte in March of 2023. Now I will have all the pricing details down in the description below since the pricing is a little bit uh, too much to put up on the screen here. So if you wanna see all the specific numbers, check the video description, they'll all be found there. So now to cover the pricing for the 2023 Mod Year, the 2.5T standard all-wheel drive is now the cheapest or entry-level GV80. And this starts at $56,645, including destination. So this is a little bit interesting because it's over $5,000 more of a starting or entry-level price versus the rear-wheel drive from the last Mod Year but it's actually $550 lower than the 2.5T all-wheel drive standard of the 2022 mod year. So it's a little bit of a win, I guess, if you were looking at the all-wheel drive base trim from last mod year, but overall, if you're looking at just the base model uh, to get into a GV80 for the cheapest price, it's a over $5,000 increase. So now moving on to the 2.5T advanced trim, this is a $4,700 option, which is up $50 from the 2022 mod year. And the 2.5T Prestige trim level is a $10,700 option, 
which is up about $800. So overall, very modest changes here on the four cylinder GV80, but moving on to the 3.5T standard all wheel drive, this went up $2,100 over last year. So that is now $63,795. So looking at the 3.5T advanced package, this is a $6,200 option, which is about $850 more than last year. The Advance Plus is a $7,900 option, which is up $500. And the 3.5T Prestige is a $12,400 option, which is up $850. And the Prestige Matte trim level is a $13,900 option, which is up about $300. So overall, you can see that most of the increase came on the 3.5T or the six cylinder side of things. It doesn't surprise me. That's probably the more volume seller out of all the GV80s, given it is a large SUV. People want a little bit more power, so that makes a little bit of sense. So that's pretty much going to wrap up all the changes for the 2023 Genesis GV80. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. It greatly helps out these videos and the channel. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button and check out some of the other content that is currently available. I have other 2023 mod or change videos on other makes and models, automotive related how-to content, and side-by-side -side review comparison videos. So make sure to check those out if you guys are interested. So if you guys happen to own a GV80, let me know the experience you've had with the vehicle as well as the dealership because this is a hot topic with Genesis and it's hard to believe that they're still kind of dealing with this issue. But um, I have had experience with the, I guess the 2019 G70 and the early Genesis dealership experience and it really wasn't positive. So let me know if you guys have had better experiences as of late. I definitely love to hear them and I read every single comment. So once again, hopefully you found this video helpful in your search for a 2023 Genesis GV80. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.